Hello and welcome back. Hope you had a great break and enjoyed our first panel session of the day just before. We're now getting into our second panel of the day, which is called Feedback Loop, ML, Music and Sound Design. Do you want to know more? I certainly do. So let me hand over to our two hosts for the session, Hendrik Vincent Koops and Anna Huang. Hendrik and Anna, over to you. Hi, my name is Vincent and welcome to this session on uh, sound design. In this session we have two teams that focused heavily on sound design in their submissions. We have Emma Geist with the song Listen to Your Body Choir and we have Sound Obsessed with the song Vessel. We'll have a, so a chance to hear both songs and uh, get some details on the process they use to create the songs and then we'll transition into a question and answering session. I'll now hand over to Anna Wang to introduce, to introduce the theme of the session in uh, more detail. Contrast between last year and this year. So last year we saw many teams uh, took more of a linear approach, like first generating melodies and chords and then using audio models to synthesize the vocals and instruments. Uh, but this year we're excited to see a lot of call and response between the songwriting and the sound design where one really feeds back into the other and back. Uh, for example, for Sound Obsessed, they had surprise audio glitches and textures that really became inspiration for melody and, and uh, storytelling. And uh, vice versa for uh, Team Emojis, uh, they generated melodies that was then sung by the singer and then used as uh, to seed audio models to generate material for sound design. So in both cases, teams really use machine learning to create a new kind of emotional interdependence between music, sound design, and beyond. So I'm excited you'll hear uh, both of the teams talk a lot more about this with uh, concrete examples. So first up, we have team Emojis. We'll first listen to their song, uh, uh, about a minute and a half of it. And then the team members, the makers of the song, John and Max, will come on to the stage to talk about their process. The name of their song is Listen to Your Body Fire. It's for, uh, it's, uh, we're playing a short version. Uh, there's no video, so you can listen closely. We'll see you on the other side. the creators of the song that you just heard. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, so do we have the, we have some uh, slides. I think that the uh, team is gonna help us uh, show. We have those up. Cool. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I guess, so Max and I are, are here today. We also have two other team members. Um, Matt Sims and uh, and Brody Jenkins, who uh, created the song with us, um, it was a it was a super fun process, and um, I think everyone felt felt like this was one of the the most interesting and enjoyable songs that we had the the chance to make together. Um, so, can I uh, move the move the slide forward? Thank you. So just to just to jump in, I want to um, give a little sense of what we what we did here um, in terms of the, of the sound design for our song. And, and I think I have to start by just talking about our, our creative direction a little bit. Um, so coming into, coming into this uh, contest, we, we knew we were gonna get pulled in, um, in different directions by, by incorporating AI in, in, 
in one way or another and using different tools that we, we hadn't tried before and different processes. So what we, the just sort of uh, early decision we came to was to base a lot of our AI generated material on um, a single starting point. And we, we picked the song Daisy Bell, which was written by uh, Harry Dacre in 1892 and was the first song to be sung by a computer in uh, 1961. So this song has had a lot of uh, history and, and cultural moments. Um, and one of the things that we, we liked about it was it's sort of a sweet and intimate uh, lyrics and, uh, and sounds that, um, you know, depending on, on how you use it, it, it could create a, a variety of different feelings when you contrast different uh, settings with, with, with that material. So along with this starting point, we, we wanted to use um, AI to create sounds that we hadn't heard before um, and uh, just sort of create a, a, a range of, of different samples and um, textures that, that we would then sort of uh, have to pull back together. Um, move over. Cool. So. Our our uh, our starting point with uh, with the song Daisy Bell was this version from 1961, sung by the IBM uh, computer. It gives you a little sense of of uh, where we're coming from. Um, and so one of the first things we did was actually have. Uh, Brody and Max, um, so you'll hear Brody singing and, and Max on the piano, uh, just sort of uh, reinterpret this song and, and make it their, make their version Daisy, of it. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to I'm half crazy. Great. Um, so, we, we sort of uh, took took these two uh, these two different versions of, of the of the song and wanted to um, having put our own twist on it basically with the, the musicians in our in our group redoing uh, redoing this old song um, we wanted to put it through uh, machine learning models using the sounds that we had actually recorded so using Brody's voice so we recorded Brody uh, she actually sang that song I think in her uh, bathroom. Um, just recorded on her cell phone. So I took that recording and um, created a, basically a data set out of it by, by changing the, the pitch and uh, timing of it slightly just to create uh, more audio so that I could train a machine learning model on it. So I trained uh, sample RNN models to, um, um, to create a bunch of samples that we used for the, for the first verse. So um, I used this basically collab notebook, which had to train for something like 12 hours. And it was a, a bit of a, a waiting game because I wasn't sure what was going to come out of it. But at the end of it, we had a whole set of uh, different little, little clips that sort of sounded like Brody and sort of sounded like Daisy Bell, but was a really interesting material to, uh, to uh, give to Max as a challenge to how to, uh, for how to put all these things together. These are the, the, the kind of sounds that came out of this. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I guess one of the really interesting things about working on this sort of project is that, so um, you, can, you can challenge the other people in your, in your team. And, and, you know, I really admire Max's production. And so it was very interesting and exciting um, to, <laughs> um, to be able to give him these kinds of things and see what he did with it. So um, let's play the, what he did with it. And just to just ju jump in real quick, a, a fun fact about those sounds you're hearing is that that organ uh, sort of piano sound in the background 
was actually from Brody's, uh, well, the AI interpretation of Brody's voice. One of the problems we had was that the sound it would just constantly create was just sort of this ee, like this constant <laughs> note, no matter what. And there was just like a plethora of that. And so I grabbed that and turned that into an instrument that we used for the basis of all our chords in the song. Um, can we move to the next uh, song? This is, uh, this is the sound of uh, drum beats also made from those uh, samples. Yeah, so, so out of all those samples, we also got these little clicks and pops and, and things like that. And actually, Max also turned those into little percussion sounds that we play back using. Um, so we also had generated MIDI drum loops and by putting those sounds together with the uh, MIDI drum loops, created the beats uh, for this song. So um, just, just sort of moving quickly through the, the rest of the process. Um, so having, having built all those parts, um, uh, Max produced a, a sketch of the track using those samples. And actually, we kept, at this point, we still had Daisy Bell as a, as a temp vocal while, um, while uh, Matt and I, other team members, were working on uh, using different AI systems to generate uh, lyrics and, and melodies. So um, let's listen to that real quick. So, so we can hear there, you know, we're, we're sort of developing the vibe of the song, even though we don't have the actual vocal recording, we don't even have the lyrics and vocal melodies finalized. We just sort of used all those songs that we got inspiration from um, using Brody's voice and then, um, and then the machine learning models to, to sort of get the feeling of the track. So at this point, we really had the feeling uh, of the track going and it was really just a matter of as, you know, as we put in the rest of the parts, um, kind of continue to develop it further. So I took the uh, stems from that version that we just heard and retrained these models um, to get new samples and loops to kind of uh, take it a little further um, in the sound design direction. So let's listen to a couple more loops from, from this stage. So in the yeah in the uh, in the sort of sketch version of the of the track, we actually had sounds that had been added by Max and our team. So we had uh, you know synthesizers um, as well as all of this the sounds created from the first round of AI generated uh, pieces, and then um, so we had much more variety to choose from when we when we did this last verse. And so let's listen to uh, <laughs> what Max did with, with his stuff. on to the yeah there we go cool so so yeah I think I think we can just leave it there basically um, you know that the, it was a really fun process just going through uh, um, col collaboratively uh, working in all these different bits and, and putting together uh, puzzle pieces is what we ended up calling it um, and uh, yeah that's the that's the song we ended up with so um, looking forward to chatting more about it Now we're going to switch to Vincent to make an introduction yep. to the other team. So next up, we have a, a team Sound Obsessed. And uh, what's really interesting, actually, I think, is that uh, the sample RNN is quite important for the sound design in, for a lot of teams, and last year as well. So, so team Sound Obsessed consists of uh, uh, Rania and Ramon. And Rania is also known as Portrait XO. Uh, and last year, Portrait XO also uh, teamed up with uh, Databots. Um, and they actually scored the highest points from the, from the jury last year. So we're happy that she's participating again uh, this year with Ramon. 
and we'll play their song, and it's accompanied with a video. And that video is actually a portrait at EXO's last experiment using AI-generated text-to-image. The flowers of the Lotus Contino Sea Vessel, shaped like an inverted con or a bell, which are very holy symbols of all peoples, and representative male and female. Let's listen from Sound Obsessed. Hi, thank you so much for having us. Um, Portrait XO here with Ramon Rezar. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so continuing my obsession with using the voice um, and combining it with different AI models, for this specific song, I really want to explore what would happen if I took my vocals and a male counterpart's vocals and try to morph them into each other. Um, so I used a few different approaches. Um, so if we can get the slideshow up, um, I'll try and move through this as quickly as possible. Just a quick overview. There's three Google Colab notebooks. I used um, BDSP autoencoder, timbre transfer first to turn our vocals into an instrument and then try to sing into each other's voices, see what that would um, give us. And then the third model is a male spec BAE by Moises, uh, Moises Porta Valenzuela, <laughs> really good friend of mine who's also an AI artist. And um, we took both of our vocals into that data uh, as one data set and then just to see what would happen. Um, and then the final uh, model is a, a custom model created by AI company Birds on Mars called croc.ai. So if we can move to the next slide. So here's a snapshot, that's the DSB autoencoder. Um, and next slide. And so we had a whole ton of samples <laughs> again, and I guess this is kind of like the name of the game. Um, anyone who's working within the space of AI raw audio generation is just going through tons and tons of audio of random glitches. So um, let's play some examples. If you move to the next slide, please. Um, so here is a, a sample of my voice resynthesizing into promotes. If you could hit play, please. To the next slide is an example of the other way around, uh, Ramon's voice into mine. If you can hit play. So the really fascinating thing that I found during this process was like, um, I'm real, I seem to be really good at breaking code <laughs> accidentally, and there were these weird sample rate errors that would happen. So like that was an output of a seven second audio clip from a, I can't remember what the length, like 19 seconds was the original audio. So the next slide will show another um, example of my voice trying to morph into Ramones on a longer sample rate error. If we could hit play, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, <there>. <laughs> 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 we don't have to play the whole thing, but 
yeah, I just thought that was a really funny one. I was like, oh, okay, so now we are Chewbacca. Um, and here's some examples of both our voices as one data set in MELSPIC BAE. Uh, if you could hit play, there's a combination of the noise. See the co See the co Next is, um, so yeah, the interesting thing I find about this particular collab notebook that I've fallen in love with is um, I love when you can hear what a machine sounds like when it's thinking, interpolating between sounds, and it created some really interesting like chirping noises, which I really loved, um, and you hear it quite a lot in our track. Um, if you could please hit play. <laughs> And I think it's um, this, like, sometimes when you get these long samples and it sounds like it's saying something, but you're not quite sure what, it leaves a lot of room for imagination to try and figure out what the machine's trying to say. Um, next slide, please. Um, had some really fun conversations with Moises um, about these chirping sounds. And um, there was a lot of, like, back and forth of um, getting direct support from him and how to use his collab notebook with, like, parameter settings and stuff that I had a lot of fun with, um, and next slide, please. And here is the last example of croc.ai. Um, you'll hear a direct text-to-speech synthesis. They trained my talking voice um, one hour worth and created five different models, um, training between 10 to 50 hours. Uh, play, please. Vessel shaped like an inverted tongue, or a bell, which are very holy symbols with all peoples, as and representative male and female. Thank you. So I'm going to pass it on to Ramon now. Um, one of my favorite things about this was like introducing these approaches to a new artist. And this was the um, first time working together. And we met and um, made Bustle in one session. So I'll pass it on. Thank you. Yeah, so um, suffice to say that wasn't your typical songwriting session uh, when we got together with all these weird sounding and glitchy sounding audio samples, which is a great starting point now in hindsight to have. And um, yeah, we can show the next slide, please. This is just an overview of our Ableton session that we had. And we started off by um, just choosing and interpreting the sounds. And we gravitated naturally to the ones that were most funny or interesting and just sparked our imagination immediately, which is great. And overall set the tone and the mood of the, the song and the production. And uh, we went through, and next slide, please. We basically sprinkled these across the set. Obviously, afterwards, uh, we had uh, we decided on tempo, and just kind of started uh, listening to the samples and trying to trying to um, get a story from them, which which is which was quite interesting because as we labeled the samples, we realized that a certain um, mood was forming, and we could kind of see it. And next slide, please, and we can click play. This is just some of the samples that we ended up using. Some chirpiness. And the last one had a natural delay to it, which we thought was quite nice. And some of them were more melodic, which was also great because it kind of set the mood tonally. Yeah. 
so yeah, we had a lot of material to work with, and it was incredible how fast it all came together. And we just suddenly were in the in the in the mode, and um, and also lyrically, everything kind of just gelled into one. And I think after one session, we had quite a lot. I think the large chunk of the song. So next slide, please. This was a cool part, which we uh, we decided to use one of the samples to um, create a synth out of it, which we were very happy with. Uh, please click play. So yeah, always fun because it's it's just something new and original, and uh, yeah, and lyrically, and um, I think the idea was just letting go of that control that we thought we had over certain things. And uh, I thought one of the most exciting parts for me of this whole process was just to constantly um, starting quite skeptically, I, I have to admit, but uh, we were able to pull it all into a song nicely. And it was just interesting that when, whenever we kind of just went with it, um, we were surprised on quite a lot of moments. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely continue writing songs this way because it's just a very handy tool and um, so many applications and so many different ways of uh, that we can implement this into future songwriting. I'll just um, finish off with the final remark. Like, it feels nice that it's not just me in isolation of like, oh, if I just crazy thinking this is like really fun and exciting. And it was really cool to get that validation, um, introduced introducing it to Ramon and um, and just like I fell in love with his music from the from the start so it was really great to um, yeah have this um, experience to just introduce this world to someone else and and see their reaction to it um, kind of like a kid in a candy shop that's like so excited about um, a new candy and just want to share it with the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sound Obsessed. That, that was that was really interesting to see uh, under the hood how you how you created the sounds of this uh, this song. Um, we're going to now transition into the um, the uh, panel discussions, and I wanted to ask uh, you the first question, uh, and it actually relates to the to the video you created as well. Um, so the video really uh, accompanies the the sounds and the sound design really well with the morphing and the, like the constant zooming in, like a sort of like Drosta effect. It's re really cool. But of course, it was created uh, post hoc. So so it was created after the song was done. And since we're discussing here sound design and and this this feedback loop of of of, of uh, where the human in the loop with sound design in in the songwriting and AI, where do you see this? Uh, um, uh, text to image part or this visual part basically in this feedback loop. And how would you incorporate this uh, more closely uh, if you do this again in next uh, for next song? Sure. Um, the text to image experimentation is something that just happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, I feel really lucky to be surrounded by a really interesting network of like data scientists who are constantly updating me on stuff that they're creating like these um, Google Colab notebooks that just get published regularly at lightning speed, I can barely keep up. <laughs> and so that video that just uh, we published today um, is like the AI generating the entire video from beginning to end based on text prompt. And so I took inspiration from our lyrics and um, fed it into this Colab notebook that took it, you could give it a BPM and it just generates everything. <laughs> it takes quite a long time to like, Play with some of the parameters until um, you see visual results that you like. But I mean, the way I see this whole um, process of like AI and creativity um, with visuals and sounds, I think anyone who works in sound or visuals both um, like having both in you know the final output of things. Um, it's a very holistic experience for me, um, and I know a lot of musicians I talk to. I know we've talked about this before. When we create music, a lot of the times there's like a visual story that happens in our heads while we're creating the music and vice versa. Um, and for this, I found that it was just so fascinating to see how the machine interpreted our lyrics. And it was a very different visual output, but it was still very inspiring. And I think at the end of the day, it's, um, it's just another source of inspiration for maybe more songwriting um, and, and just, um, yeah, another, uh, just another source of like, also finding some inspiration in a very quick way because AI, that's where like AI is just 
so crazy to me that <laughs> these tools are a being implemented and created so quickly and and the process like the training and the output is getting faster and faster so um, if anyone feels like a songwriting block or whatever, we have these tools that are just like helping us with our creativity. Awesome, thank you. I'll hand over to Anna now for the next uh, question. It feels a common theme is uh, kind of happy accidents that happen. Uh, so this question is for both teams. Uh, okay. When working with these machine learning models, it seems like surprises and, and um, kind of unexpectedness of, of accidents play a really key role uh, in kind of shaping the, the whole process. Uh, but at the same time, they're kind of inherently like unpredictable and um, also hard to like reproduce or extend when you find something you like. Um, how did you learn from kind of this process? And, uh, and if you, do you kind of adapt your workflow on the way? Um, how, how do you feel these accidents like really kind of feed back into uh, your process and, and subsequent uh, decisions you make? Um, so yeah, I can, I can take this. Uh, I feel like when I'm creating, like if I'm producing another artist, a human artist, let's say, um, uh, when I'm working with them, a lot of what I'm trying to do, since a lot of what we're creating is in Ableton or in a computer or using samples or synths or whatever it is that we're using, um, I'm trying to find organic pieces to add in, you know, human pieces that are from them. And it's almost like when everything can be melodyned and auto-tuned and quantized, we're trying to find organic pieces to bring humanity back in or like mistakes back into the feeling. Um, and what I found was surprisingly enough, a lot of the AI generated material worked perfectly almost too well, where it was really weird, but the AI uh, content was almost too organic. Where I was like, hey, hey, calm down. Like we gotta, we gotta, you know, tone this down a little bit here and like, like, you know, let's chop this up a little bit here and just calm down in that section. It's a little weird. And so um, I, I thought that was really, really interesting and really surprising. Um, same for us, really. I thought you guys did a, a tremendous job at uh, filtering out those beautiful little mistakes because I guess mistakes as mistakes, but they can also be translated into something that one didn't expect and that just sound amazing. So I agree with that with the, maybe some of them being a bit too too organic in that sense, but it's still a better, better um, that way than the other way around, and one kind of has to create some kind of movement. But with this um, sample pack that we basically generated from these, so many of them are still unexplored, and I think it's a, it's a really, um, just a very interesting process and very interesting um, sonic, sonic um, result that one gets from these samples. Now both teams have a chance to ask each other some questions. Right, fire away. <laughs> I have a question for Emojized. What was your favorite um, what the F moment? I don't know if we're allowed to curse it here, but <laughs> I'm always curious about this. Um, I mean, essentially it was that, and John, you can, you can uh, talk about this too, but uh, we just had that high-pitched sound that would come from almost, no, it didn't seem like it mattered what we fed the, uh, the, the AI, like we'd just feed it, you know, tons of nutrient sound, you know, morsels to it, and it just would come back with this single note that was just, I guess, like the root note of the song in general. Um, and so it was kind of getting frustrated dealing with that, and John was really good about going through and grabbing these little tiny moments that were seemingly chaotic, um, like absolute madness, and, 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 and we were able to use those, but the, the, I think I was surprised how much it felt like a horror film or like a nightmare, you know, the sounds that came from the AI. It was like we're trying to make this sweet song, and a lot of it was some of the most terrifying sounds we had ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'd love yeah. to hear on your side, yeah, as well. Yeah, I know what you mean about the, the, the horror, experience like I think we had that too like are we making a horror track <laughs> um, and I think especially when you're working with like your own voice as the data set that produces really creepy results where it really sounds like a, a, a machine that's trying to create a human or a human trying to make its way through a machine and um, so yeah it was it was interesting I mean how did you feel 
I think I, I left the loop on on Ableton and then I went and got some water in the kitchen and I forgot about it and it was still running and then suddenly in the background it was just very eerie sound coming out of the, the system. I was like, what is that? And then I realized that it was, it was one of the samples that had just gone off. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, um, mystery in these samples, which is a really, again, a very exciting thing. Did you find that there was um, samples that you really that you really liked and wanted to hold on to, like certain sounds that you would use again in another song, um, or or even processes of creating that sound that you'd want to go back to to use again? Yeah, there is actually this one sample that I've pinned to. We didn't end up using it in this track in the end, but it like took both our voices and sandwiched them together in an interesting way. And this is something I'm really fascinated in um, because I'm really curious about like the binary nature of code. And with these results that of like combining both of our vocals, for example, the outputs, it was hard to tell sometimes if it was really doing a, a pure blend of both of our vocals. Um, and then every now and then you would hear both of our vocals together, but not like as a blend, it would just kind of be kind of like sandwiched on top of each other. And there's just this one sample that like, I don't know, it sounded like a cool vocoder effect or something like that. Do we have Do questions from the audience? Oh, uh, Patrick, so you, you wanted to add one. Oh no, I was going to ask the same question back. If you have um, any like favorite samples that that you are going to go back to because it's just got an interesting texture, or or if it also maybe gave you new ideas because it's like a new process that maybe gave birth to new methods for you. I really liked, and, and I think you guys did it as well. I really liked the sound of our the chords that we had um, that I had written and that I replaced with an instrument from um, Brody's vocal. It just had like a it's sort of warbly VHS, not quite on sort of sound. And I saw in your session, you did the same thing. You built your chords. And I love that sound. Like, honestly, when I heard when you guys showed it in your session, I was like, all right, we got to get that instrument because that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, I want to use that too. Did the same with, uh, with your organ, I think it was. You titled it. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, we should just make a sound pack. Just, just like d disturbingly sweet uh, <laughs> AI sounds. Sounds good. Question from the from the audience. Uh, um, it's a it's a sh should be a quick one, but uh, uh, it's from uh, from Mark Simmons, and he's asking. It's interesting to see how in both projects AI tools were used to create a unity between symbolic aspects like, mel like melody and lyrics, and sound design aspects. Do you think that it that it was primarily primarily a help in structuring the process, or does it add to the overall prosody? and integrity of the final song. Maybe emojized? I think, I think it was, well, it was very intentional on our part that um, we, we were hopeful that, it would, that, that, would, that would happen, that it would come through to the final result, but we didn't know. Um, but I think, I, think, I think it certainly did um, because we were, we were very much influenced by like the the vibe, for lack of a better word, um, that we got from hearing like Max's first version of when he put these sounds together. And once we heard that, we were like, okay, I know what this song is, and I know what the feeling is like. And then when I had to go back and create um, a vocal melody, and when Matt had to go back and pick out which lyrics we were going to use. Um, and I think when Brody was singing it, you know, these things were all very influenced by the sounds, the sort of palette that, that we already had underneath. I would um, also support, um, support that in, I would say, our approach was very similar. We wanted to allow these AI generated samples to be a starting point to help uh, like guide us towards the direction of the song. And in the end, um, we loved the sample so much that we wanted to um, treat the production a lot more simply. And that's something that I found in my process. And um, I think Ramon, you also took a similar approach. And it helped with the kind of like overall production element of it 
but also I think songwriting too. It was interesting to do this like call and response, um, working with these samples and we went for a much more sparse direction. But um, yeah, it's, I think it's always nice to be able to work with tools that help you break free from form of any like, I don't know, maybe you wanna try a different format or um, because we're both singer producers, um, we can sometimes get locked into these like traditional modes of thinking like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or, you know. Um, so with this song, I think, yeah, we had a much more loose approach and it felt really good. I would just say as well, it's because I think we use the voice and um, it's just kind of has, you, you, you view those samples that come back as something that's, that are familiar. So one um, logically brings a certain respect to the samples and one kind of just has this eeriness about it. And I was very surprised that it influenced our lyrics, it influenced the vibe um, and the overall theme of it just Sometimes it was one or two samples that just set the stage and we labeled them and that again created some visual aspect which helped us lyrically and also with the structure of the song. So there's definitely, um, um, yeah, a lot of power in those samples, yeah. Awesome, thank you. I think that's, uh, we're running out of time so I wanna hand over to Anna again. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, thank you both teams for really showing us uh, your process and a lot of the the thoughts and, and, and the musicality that, that went into it. Uh, it really feels like embracing a lot of these accidents. Uh, it's intrinsic to the feedback loop. And uh, here we're seeing a lot of feedback loop between different modalities, between the material, the symbolic, the audio, and also uh, between different um, uh, kind of uh, 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 different people in the, in the group, like uh, pe uh, folks that are more experienced, folks that are on the more music production side, and um, kind of a new listener, uh, an experienced listener. So thank you all for all your insight. So this is the, we'll bring you. this to the end thank you. Yeah, of this session. Thank you all. And the next session will be happening in about 17 minutes. Uh, the title is Can Musical AI Be Live? It's with Ryan Groves, Ash Kusha, CJ from Data Box, and um, Stella Tuala. And thank you all for tuning in. And we will see you later in the day also. Thank you so much, Anna and Vincent and all the teams. Gosh, all those samples, glitches, even the horror sounds, it's super exciting, especially for an old school musician like myself. As Anna said, we're up for a break. See you back here at five o'clock CEST for our next session. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.